Okay, good afternoon everybody. Uh, welcome to this afternoon's first session, uh, which is uh, Br Br Brian Mathers. Some of you might not know Brian, but he's been innovating in the learning space for a, for a very long time, and I'm actually looking forward to hear what he's going to say as well. Okay, without further ado, Brian. Thank you. Um, when Marin uh, asked me to come and speak at the ALT conference, um, I was really pleased. You know, um, technology, innovation, that's my sort of thing. Um, and so I thought I'd look up the website to see, um, you know, who's speaking and, and, and whatnot. And I noticed the, uh, the, the conference was called Riding Giants. Um, and I realized then that Marin really only invited me to be a mascot. <laughs> Uh, to, to this, which I'm happy to be, really. So it's, uh, it's with that thought that I, I've, let me just give you the blocker's guide to me. Um, I, originally a software engineer, would you believe? Um, but I've, I've started a, a couple of businesses, or three businesses in my time. Um, the last of which I sold to City and Gills, which is how I found myself inside City and Gills. Um, but I need to sort of tell you that because whenever I'm talking about culture, um, I'm fascinated between the difference in culture between a, a, a small organization um, and, a, and, a, and a large organization, or, or, or a very new organization and an old organization. Um, so you might, uh, that might help for you to know that. Um, I, 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 work, uh, I work a couple of days a week for City and Gills now, um, and I do things like this sort of stuff. I don't know if you've come across it, but the Think Out Loud Club, um, where, um, how do I say this with just make sure I'm being nice? Um, it's difficult for awarding bodies to be innovative, I think. Is that fair, Joe? Yeah. It is, because uh, because generally they're a bit more of a of a police force, or, or you know, in terms of making sure that uh, things are followed appropriately. And there's good reasons for that. That's that's all good. Um, but I think uh, awarding bodies can be real facilitators of conversation. Okay, so City and Gills has got about 3,500 centres in the UK and, and about 6,000 more globally. And, um, and that's a lot of innovative people in those centres, right? Because uh, necessity, I think, is the mother of all invention, and it's just not me that thinks that, but uh, um, you, know, you tend to find that those that are innovating are on the fringe, right? They're, they're, they're where the pain is, they're where the delivery is. Um, and what I think I'd like Club tries try tried to do whenever we got together in the Science Museum, and we're going to get together again in, in December, was to uh, look at emerging technologies and to get people talking about them in small groups, but also um, to, to sort of to uh, mix up those that are already experimenting with those that are, hey, what's this? Open badges? That sounds a bit crazy. You know, so, um, so if that sort of thing interests you in FE, now I realize that that maybe most of you are more on the itchy side, which I, I forgive you all for, <laughs> don't worry. Um, but if, if, if on the FE, if you're interested in, in sort of looking at emerging technologies and sharing uh, you know, with, with other people, then, then please jump on board our, our Google Plus uh, group in which, that's, well, that's what we do. And we try to have hangouts every so often to, to, to get that conversation going. Um, because I do you not think that learning technology is a bit of a, um, you know, I don't know what, what quite to, to sort of draw a parallel with, but you sort of need to know the buzzwords, you know? So if you're gonna talk about open badges, you sort of need to know a few things to just be able to throw into conversation. Uh, you know, oh yeah, open badges, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about there. You know, uh, learning technology is very like that, and, and, um, but that, that means that there's a whole bunch of people who are saying stuff but don't really know anything about it, right? As much as there's a whole bunch of people who actually do, right? And that's all good, but the conversations need to be had, that's all I'm saying, very simple point, right? Good. Um, this is one of Bob Harrison's th thoughts because some of the other stuff that I do uh, is on the Feltag side of things. And uh, not that I did as much work as uh, Maren here or indeed Bob or Nick who's up at the back there or Diana. Um, uh, heavyweights of the, uh, if I can call you that, Bob, um, of the, <laughs> of the uh, learning technology sphere. Um, but also I think you know, sort of originators of quite a, quite a uh, an important bit of momentum, really. Um, and this was this was a, a throwaway comment that I sort of uh, drew up that, that that Bob says uh, said in a in a meeting. You know, in terms of um, you know w where is further education on the on the digital continuum? And and uh, and if 
I, he didn't say it was just sort of about, you know, about there, but if it is about there, why is that? And what can we do to change it? What can we do to, to, to turn up the dial? Um, and that's really where what, what Feltag, I think, has been trying to, to address um, and to look at, well, what, what are the recommendations that we can grab um, and that we can put to ministers or even just put out there to the sector um, you know, to drive these things forward? And it's great to see that there's a few uh, Feltag um, sessions being had, I think, of tomorrow, uh, which is all good. And, um, and it's great to see some institutions just grabbing that and getting on with it. Uh, that's the way forward as far as, as far as I'm concerned. So look, Feltai came up with a whole load of stuff. Don't expect you to, uh, um, to be able to read that, but if I, was a, uh, if I was an HE institution, I would be testing you all at the, at the end of the lecture, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm friendly FE. So, um, but Feltag said a lot. There's a lot of recommendations in there, but there's just two, two of the things that sort of kept coming up, which are pretty obvious, right, but um, that I just want to focus on today, right? And um, number one is, is, is culture, right? Um, and uh, as I said before, I'm, I'm fascinated by culture. I'm, I'm fascinated that um, uh, in a small business context, if you add one more person, the culture changes, right? That person brings stuff to your culture and it changes, right? In a, in, a, in a big organization, you add one more person and they conform to the culture that's already there, right? And, um, and therefore, changing a culture uh, uh, in an educational institution, um, in any institution, I think is really difficult, right? In fact, look at Alstead and how they change a culture uh, successfully in a school. They'll generally knock down the school, you know, build a modern school. Uh, all the pupils are pretty much the same, right? But different management and most of the same teachers. Um, and, and by changing the environment, that can have a real big effect on, on changing culture. But uh, I, I think culture is, uh, culture is a bit of an enigma. It's, it's difficult to sort of to, to nail down. And, and, and part of the journey I've been on after being acquired by City and Guilds, or after my small business was acquired by City and Guilds, is trying to figure out why that culture, the culture I find myself in, was the way it was. Because I don't know if you I can identify with this, but if you, if you, if you find yourself getting frustrated uh, that your ideas aren't being taken seriously or, or, or whatever inside your organization, um, I, in fact, the way to tell, I suppose, whether you have a, a, a culture of innovation inside your institution is whether you're encouraged to experiment or whether you're operating beneath the radar, right? Um, so if you just reflect for a minute, if, you're, if you find yourself sort of going, there's no way I'm going to go and ask for permission to do that. I'm just going to get ahead and do it, right? Uh, sort of sub-radar experimentation um, versus the sort of hands-off approach of uh, actually, you know, to innovate is to experiment. You know, w we all need to be doing some experimentation. And, and dare I say it, even given permission to experiment. Even that in itself, I think, is a very, is a very powerful thing. Um, but yeah, c culture fascinates me. But two of the big things that, ke that, that kept coming out of these felt tag discussions were the importance of leadership and culture, OK? Um, I, I attended a Google, um, there was a, a, um, a presentation given by somebody at, at, at Google um, that I was fascinated by. But Google, when you think about it, have a, an inbuilt culture of experimentation and innovation, right? And, and they're a pretty impressive organization in terms of size, given that they've only been around for a fairly short period of time, right? Um, but if you were to cut Google open, you will find sort of this inside their culture. And it probably started with the, the, the first two, two guys, you know, um, and that the people that then they added to it, you know, also maintain this culture, and somehow they've managed to hold on to that culture. Um, to the point where, you know, I read yesterday that, uh, you know, Google are planning to use drones to deliver stuff to people in their houses. That's the craziest idea I've ever heard, right? Can you imagine having that idea and, and going, hey, drones, yeah, let's get some buy-in from my colleagues on that one, you know? <laughs> It, mo most institutions would sink that idea, and if somebody mentioned it, they'd sink that person. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, 
But yet yeah, Google, and, and here's a subtle difference, and, and you might have already figured this out, but uh, again, this really helped me, that, that Google, when it comes to success and failure, uh, you know, Google sees success in, in, in the learns. So that's probably not even English, but uh, you know, if, if the project produces stuff that the business can learn from, then it's a success, no matter whether the, the thing that you created actually was a success or a failure, okay? Now, you know, in order to do that, in order to learn proper stuff, right, you actually have to measure properly too, right? Now, I don't know if you've ever been involved in a, in a development project, but usually that's the stuff that gets cut, right? You know, you're trying to build something, it's MVP approach, you know, uh, and, and you get to a certain point and it's just like, right, well, whew, off goes the help. <laughs> We're gonna have to write that later. And uh, you know any, anything that's going to sort of measure uh, stuff is, is also right. We don't need that now either. We can we can do that later. But of course, you're not going to get uh, the learns if you don't put in uh, the measurements. And that's a pretty pretty big difference, really, to to my experience of of, of these sort of things. Because even if you are operating, you know, in a in a, in a relatively agile uh, you know frame of mind. If, you're, if the business wrapped around you isn't, you know, budget recycles, uh, you know, sort of project managers with waterfall models and Gantt charts, critical paths, then, you know, you're, you're, you're going to go, hey, we just put our product out and we've just measured that, you know, this whole idea, totally wrong, we need to go in that direction. Well, you know, you're going to get shot, you know, rather than, hey, that's great, well, great, we learned from that and now we know the direction that we need to go on, okay? so. Culturally, I think um, having that in your core is, is, is pretty important. And I think we can learn from organizations like Google. Um, I, moving on from that, I, I, uh, this is a bit of a, a, maybe a silly slide. You know, what, what, what culture would you prefer for education? You know, a, a performance culture or an innovation culture? And, and, and your response is, Bobby Brand, come on, don't be so silly. You really have both, right? Uh, well, it's one of those things about culture, I think, uh, um, that, that your top priority sort of dribbles down right throughout your organization, okay? So if your top priority as an education institution is performance, uh, then, then, then that will have an impact right throughout your organization, okay? And even though I would suggest that if you had an innovation culture that that might breed performance too, um, if it were me, I would put innovation as the, as the top priority, and this, and this is why, this is why, because um, I, I am an exam passer, you know what I mean? I, 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 you know, I sort of figured it out around sort of GCSE, then I made a few mistakes, sort of, but by the time I got to A-levels, I sort of, yeah, you know, exam strategy, and by the time I got to university, I, 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 a pretty, pretty good player, you know, in the, in the performance stakes. Right, and I left my university without a love for learning, right, and and I didn't even see it, and 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 now having just done uh, in the last year or two, I did a MOOC, uh, which I finished. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the first one I dropped out after two weeks, but anyway, I, the, the second one, which was, you know, it was the first time, it was the first time that I can remember that I did a course from an institution uh, because I was interested and because I wanted to learn and not because I wanted to get a certificate, right? And that was, that was f a fun fundamental, you know, it was a, it was a big penny dropping for me, you know, that, um, and, and therefore I, I, I love MOOCs as a result uh, as much as we can debate them all day, but, uh, and it was a very good MOOC, I have to say, it was the um, it was University of Queensland, the um, Think 101 on the edX platform, uh, which I thought was pretty good as well, uh, but it was the science of everyday thinking, right? And and it changed the way I th think about stuff. You know, it, it had an impact, right? It it uh, uh, it made me question my. In fact, it even made me question my faith. You know, because it was sort of it was talking about how your brain works and and, and sort of uh, um, you know confirmation bias and all, all the stuff that's just I find incredibly interesting. But the bottom line was, I you know I did it. I, I did it because I was interested in it. It's the first time in a very long time. But I've got kids now, and I and I and I want them, I want them coming out um, of uh, of education institutions with 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 a fire in there, 
If you talk to Johnny Ball, he'll say, you know, the most important thing is teaching kids how to learn. You know what I mean? To learn for themselves, right? Uh, Dead Poets Society, one of my favorite films. Um, you know, it's, it's the, look, look at the battle between the, the sort of the guy starting the fire, you know, in terms of sucking the marrow out of poetry, uh, and the institution that he fights against, which is, you know, geared towards performance. Uh, and uh, as much as that's quite a, a, a contrast there, I think we need to be looking at this stuff all the time. Um, and, uh, and, and education needs to be focused on starting a fire rather than filling a bucket, I think. Um, anyway, look, I'm starting to meander now, and uh, there's a very real chance that I will go over my time, so I need to be focused, focused, focused. Right. Um, th well, this is the closest drawing I could do to leadership, by the way. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit silly, uh, um, I know, but obviously culture and leadership go hand in hand. Um, and in talking to different colleges, you see different approaches to, uh, uh, to to their leadership. And it just seems to me that those that are more experiment-oriented, those that are more innovative, in terms of their leadership, are more hands-off, right? Um, they are, they, they recognize that innovation happens not at, not at the top, but usually, you know, on the fringe, right? They, they, they recognize that. And, and instead, they, they focus on trying to create a belief system, I think, or that's what it seems like to me, right? So instead of trying to do a top-down, let's control everything approach, which is essentially, you know, um, yeah, some sort of dictatorship where all the good ideas start at the top. That is not my experience of, of where good ideas come from. Um, but instead, they try to create a belief system that people can own and buy into, right? Um, which actually, that belief system is as much to do with students as it is to do with the staff, right? Um, and therefore, I, I, think, I think that's what good leadership does in, in, in the FA space when it comes to technology, okay? Um, and why should it do that? Because small ideas make a big difference, right? Um, you, know, you know, going back to the drone idea, you know, it starts with a little thought in a meeting. That's where ideas come from, right? And, and, and either the institution is oriented towards growing those little seeds of ideas or they're, they're oriented towards squishing them quickly before anyone gets too embarrassed or, 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 or before uh, there's too much failure around, before we spend too much money or whatever it is, okay? Um, and I suppose this leads me to, to my, my, my proposal to you, which you can laugh at if you want to. But, um, when I went down from working five days with City Guilds to four days to si with City Guilds, uh, essentially it was about a couple of years ago, and I and I had I had a few things I needed to think about, a, a few itches I needed to scratch. So I, I thought, right, I'll go around four days a week. I'll take one day and I'll spend it in my man shed. Right now, my man shed is a proper space for contemplation. Right, uh, complete with whiteboard and and, and seven-year-old Mac. Right. Um, but what I found was that whenever I, I started to spend one day a week uh, on, on the stuff that I was interested in outside of City and Guilds, uh, um, that within a couple of months, um, my four day a week job was really benefiting from that one day a week outside. And I started to actually get, started to, to, to be resentful, I suppose, because I wasn't getting paid for that one day a week. Uh, and yet some of my best you know, thinking was, was you know, was happening there. And indeed, that's where I started to draw a couple of years ago. Um, if you'd asked me a couple of years ago, do you, do you draw? I'd gone, no, I don't really draw. Software engineer, we're not supposed to draw, you know? Um, and, and yet, it's radically changed how I work, right? Because I'm always trying to think, how, how, what does that look like? You know, how, how could I draw that? You know, how could I, how could I get that thing in those people's heads, you know? And, um, so I think there's something, and again, this is not new, is it? It's the Google principle of 20% of your time, you know, one, one day out of five, um, having the space, but also the accountability, and that's, that's the key. It's not the, it's not the you know, you know uh, beanbags and reefers, you know, um, but it's the, it's the uh, interest-led, um, it's the, yeah, as I said, accountable, peer-accountable uh, learning that I think is essential. And, and I think teachers need that space. And I'm increasingly worried, as no doubt you, you are too, that actually um, we're going in the opposite direction, 
right? And we're going more and more towards a, a performance-oriented education system. And I don't think that's good enough. And as you, uh, you know, masters of this realm as you are, um, well, maybe we can do something about that. Um, so what I'm proposing, I suppose, is that, is that actually, whether you're in business, whether you're in university, whether you're in FE college, you need space to breathe. If you don't have space to breathe, then see getting up with the latest learning technology or figuring out what's right for you in your classroom setting or whatever else, that's not going to happen. Or it might happen in your Sunday nights when you should be watching Downton Abbey or I don't even know if Downton Abbey's on a Sunday night. Anyway, it's all live streaming these days, isn't it? Um, anyway, I will move on. Um, so yeah, a picture says a thousand words. I find that this is one of the most effective ways of, of saying something, okay? Um, or of getting an idea off the ground, and I'll, I'll, I'll get onto that in a little minute. Um, you know, to try to picture what it looks like and to have a good enough representation of that that somebody looks at it and goes, aha, I see what you're saying, right? If you've ever tried to get an idea off the ground and you're a bit geeky, right, and, and you've gone to someone who, and you're, and you're like, this is the best idea ever, and they, they sort of look at you with those eyes going, I haven't understood a word you're saying. You know, uh, yeah, that's all very well. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, and you know it's never going to go anywhere. Well, um, you've got to look at three minutes. Goodness me, you've got to look at other ways of uh, a, of communicating what it is you're trying to say and communicating your idea. Whether that's telling a story, and this is an animation that we put together in terms of what learning might look like in 2020. You'll notice I'm speaking faster now. Um, or <laughs> And th this is the non-profit that I've set up in, in my, in my part-time in terms of getting young people into uh, digital jobs, essentially by, by, by taking them on, by, by boiling stuff down over a period of time and trying to get it on a one page, right? Um, or whether you are evangelizing. You know, open badges, I'm a big fan of open badges. You know, decentralized education, what more do you want? Um, unless you're an institution. Did I say that? Um, I, but if you're trying to say, you know, trying to communicate what an open badge is to people is actually pretty difficult, right? Um, I, especially when they want to understand and they're nodding their head and you don't know whether it's actually gone in or not. So, so actually trying to, this is this typical sort of my sort of slide, where you're trying to focus in on, what, well, let me pick four things and let me try to articulate that so I can talk through that and so you can understand maybe a little bit more about open badges. So in terms of evangelizing, I think really important. So one minute, goodness me, right? Be prepared, one minute whistle, whistle through here. Um, I was going to tell you about how we get learning technology off the ground, but um, I, I've sort of touched on the MVP stuff. This really helped me, and you might, you've probably seen this before, but I trailed around UK, you know, talking about uh, e-portfolios it was at the time, which is what my last business was. And I didn't realize this, that actually a lot of people I were talking to were way down the, 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 the innovation curve here. And I was just going to say that, look, if you are trying to get an idea off the, off the ground, find early adopters and, and, and treat them well. And, and there you go, dust, really. Okay? Because you'll always come across people down here who just don't know really why you're building what you're building. Um, any idea getting it off the ground, you probably need twice as much runway as you think you do. You know, in, if in a small business, that's cash. Um, maybe in a large institution, that might be time um, and also cash. Um, and like so many people come up to me and say, you know, Brian, I've got such a good idea for an app. And, and oh, goodness me, I've had so many of those conversations where, look, an app, idea, to a penny. You know, getting an app off the ground, that's, that's getting a business off the ground. You know, the marketing you need alone or the brand that you need for an app alone. Um, so essentially you need a kit, kit bag full of, full of stuff. Not that you can't learn this stuff on the way, but uh, um, I think it's best to, to sort of, if you're going to enter into that, um, try to get something off the ground that you look at the whole picture, okay? Sorry, I'm rattling through here. I've got a word. I'm not looking at Joe. In, in, in. Um, all right, lastly, I, I'm actually nearly there. Lastly, I also just wanted to point out it's all about people, right? It's, it's tempting to think it's all about the product that you're building. Uh, but actually, you know, it's about the developers who go further than they should in terms of the time that they spend or their, their creative juices or being persistent with an idea. It's a, oh goodness me, um, it's, a, it's about the, 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 the people that you need to get up on, on early on a Sunday and fly to some godforsaken place in order to sell, you know, or have a conversation about your product. It's, um, it's the people you need 
you know, on the end of the line that personally are, hold that responsibility for your product in terms of giving support. It, it's, it is actually all about people. Um, democracy, just a little side note. If you're ever running a business, don't run it democratically. I did this in my first business. It was the worst idea I ever had, right? <laughs> Anytime you want to make uh, one step forward, you've got to get everybody else's permission. It, it may be good for making laws, right? Because actually, we should probably have less laws than we have, but um, not good for running a business and not good for running a project, okay? So democracy, bad. You heard it here first. Um, Churchill said practically the same thing. Um, you need a big vision, and your vision needs to be flexible enough for other people to buy into that vision, okay? And as I said before, you need a, you need a belief system. And if there's one thing I could encourage you to do if you are trying to get an idea off the ground or, or, or or you're, you want to get a technology idea off the ground, get yourself a mentor, or even better, get yourself two mentors. Um, I have benefited greatly from objective, you know, from guys that are just a wee bit further on down the track, uh, who are able to sort of speak into your idea and validate some of your assumptions uh, or give you the right encouragement. And really, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's worth more than gold. So listen, I think that is me. Um, um, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and I hope that all made some sort of sense. And um, I'll hand back to Joe. I think we're going to do questions, are we? Yeah, absolutely. Questions. Bye, bye, Thank you, Brian. There should be a there should be a roving mic there. Any questions for Brian? Gentleman there. Thank you. Um. Uh, great. Very, woke us all up after lunch. Thanks very much indeed. That's great. Um, and uh, a, a, a lot in there to chew, and you kind of uh, uh, accelerated a bit towards the end. Yeah. I, I just wanted to go back to uh, Moore's chasm and the curve there, yeah. um, and to speak up actually for the early majority, not just the early adopters. Because okay. you, you, you know, you, you, you rightly talked about the enthusiasm that comes from early adopters, but what I take from that particular curve is that there's a risk that you don't get beyond the early adopters to the early majority. And in some cases, the early adopters are, t are so enthusiastic that they can put off the rest. Sure. So I, I, just, I, I just wanted to kind of speak up for the early majority. Yeah, I, I think that's totally valid. I think that's totally valid. Oh, okay, go on. Go. So, I'd like to ask you, because you are, you are looking, looking around, so it's got a two-stage question. Okay. First of all, where's the real innovation happening in, in, in English AFE? Who, who are the pockets of it? Okay. And uh, probably a second question, really for this HE audience, how can HE help and support and, and, and support that articulation, if you like, that flow for these, for these learners that may be flowing from FE into HE? Are there things that this audience could do to, to help FE? Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a big question. You, in ter let's, let's do the first one first, right? In terms of the, the, what are the pockets of, of, of innovation, um, I'm, I, I'm actually, I'm not sure if I'm qualified to answer that, but I'll tell you where I would hope that the pockets of innovation would be, and again, I'd point right back to open badges, right? In terms of, I know there's, the organisations are tinkering with it. In fact, uh, you told me you're tinkering with it, which is good, which hopefully you'll mention in your talk. Um, I I just see so much potential, and, and obviously because uh, Open Badges is such an emerging technology, I suppose it it is a long way from its tipping point. You know what I mean? Uh, and so it needs institutions of all types to get on board. It needs employers to get on board, but but uh, it definitely needs um, it definitely needs both HE and FE. To get Im involved, but to also to start innovating. You know, and I, I think um, if if the world's going to start, you know, uh, conjuring up badges left, right, and centre, well, I think we need to educate the world in terms of what makes a good badge and what doesn't make a good badge, or or what a peer assessed badge, a solid peer assessed badge, might might look like, or, or the mechanism that might sit behind it that's robust, or you know, what makes good evidence that gets attached to a badge, or and that's our world. You know what I mean in terms of H and FE. And I, and I think we should be leading that, um, and, and I wonder whether we will be, really, is, 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 a, is a point. I, I know that you're a great advocate of, of Open Badge yourself, Joe. I'm not just saying that, just to make you feel good. Um, now, what was the second part? Uh, the, the what, can, what can HE help? Um, I have no idea. 
I have no idea. I, I suppose I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I'm not good at appealing to institutions per se, but maybe to, in terms of individuals, um, you know, and, and even just stepping out there in, in the space where you're in with the ideas that you have, you know, and, and have a little bit of confidence in terms of being able to do your part, really. Uh, so maybe it's not an appeal to an institution or an institution at all, it's, it's to it's the individuals because that's where the real, the, the real help comes from, you know what I mean, or the real innovation comes from, and you yourself being an innovator, Joe, know that, right? One was a two more questions. We'll squeeze them in. The gentleman there and then over there. Yes, gentleman there. Take, take you first. This is the microphone is going to get you back in a minute. No. Hi, Brian. Um, I'm just wanted to sort of say. Um, uh, that I'm what you were talking about is very close to my heart as well. I'm very, very interested in um, organisation culture and also this idea of innovation both in cultures and in education. Mm -hmm. um, and not really a question, but just sort of saying that only very recently we've taken a slightly different approach to um, a piece of development in our university. Um, and we've completely ignored management and we've just gone and done some secretive stuff. We're, we're, cu we're currently under the radar at the moment. I'm right, working good. on that. Um, but <laughs> well, no. Um, but it's, um, it's made, we've only done sort of two days, but the, the change in the way that the developers were working was just, it, just amazing. Like the, the, the motivation was palpable, really. Mm. And um, just that it's, it's so important um, and yeah, we sort of need to need to see more more evangelists like you, really. <laughs> well, 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 listen. Look, um, I think you raise a good point, though, as well. That um, as much as you can try to just do stuff under the radar, eventually, uh, you know, if you go against the the uh, hierarchy, you, your idea will be shot down. You know what I mean? So, so as much as I'm all for under the radar, you need to have enough. You know, sort of enough momentum, and then to sort of to, to have a twin track approach of, of making sure that there are people who will think it's their idea whenever you spread it with them. If you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, I think it's selling the benefits, really. Like I think the, the the difficult bit is is providing that proof of concept to say, look, we can do something really cool here. Yeah. Um, and then s and showing them why why we need to do more of it. Well, well look, uh, look, most people I think are inherently good. You know what I mean. Um, but often can't see. You know what I mean? And, and listen, look, we spend our time trying to communicate to all sorts of things, all sorts of people. So, you know, focusing on the articulation of the idea, and part of that is getting something up and running, is a really good way to articulate what it is. Uh, so, quite right. Sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, so, you mentioned whether institutions should be innovators or performance driven. Yeah. Um, I think a key part of that is educating our customers, because, of course, in the past we haven't had customers, whereas now we do. And I think the natural tendency is to move towards a performance kind of focused model because, yeah. you know, students are paying up to £9,000, £27,000 for a three-year course yeah. to come to university. And so to some extent, to get an innovator-focused institution, you also need to educate the customers and tell them that's what they want. Yeah. Whereas without it, then the tendency is to focus on performance. Yeah, I, th I think that's two, a very solid point, actually, because I, and I use myself as an example where... I just thought that's the way it was, you know what I mean? And, and, and I was doing a degree to get as high a mark as I possibly could in order to get a job, you know, that, that so I, I, I needed to, to sort of to get back to where Brian was and, and educate that guy. So it's, 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 it's the system as a whole, you see, you're, you're absolutely quite right, um, that, that needs to really realise the value of that, starting that fire, the value of loving learning, really, quite right. Well, can I, can I thank you for being inspirational as ever? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.